Hi, Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here. Sales numbers for October, the first month of Q4 are mostly in. So let's take a look at EV sales numbers from around the world. As usual, all content in this video is our opinion only. We do not recommend buying or selling any financial instruments. Now, before we get started, I wanted to let you guys know of a new Tesla documentary series that we've released covering the complete history of Tesla. Each episode covers one year of Tesla's history, starting in 2010, the year of the IPO. Not only do we cover all the stories, but we show you how the stock performed over that time. All the historical product unveils, major announcements and controversies will all be covered. And best of all, you'll hear from Elon a whole bunch of stories that have become completely lost and forgotten about. If you want to check it out, I'll leave a link of the episodes in the description below. Anyways, let's get started in the United States. With sales estimates for the month of October showing, as usual, the Model 3 in a league of its own. When we take a closer look at Model 3 deliveries, we can see that they are about 4,500 less than during the first month of Q3. On the other hand, we can see that Model S and X have both increased in deliveries in the first month of every quarter in 2019. Also to note, the difference between the Model X and X deliveries have been increasing over the same time period. Now is that due to the Model 3 taking sales away from the Model S? Maybe. But it'll be interesting to see how the Model Y will affect the numbers when production starts in 2020. Other things to note is that the Chevy Bolt recorded 1500 sales which is significantly higher than its previous first months of the quarter throughout 2019. It'll be interesting to see if October was a one-time event or if sales are genuinely picking up. Moving on to the Audi e-tron, we can see that while vehicle sales have broken four consecutive months of declines, 467 sales in October is still a far cry from what Audi had envisioned with the e-tron. Moving on to Canada, another market in which the Model 3 has been dominating the EV market outselling the next two best-selling EVs, the Chevy Bolt and Nissan Leaf, at a rate of 5 to 1 in Q3 of 2019. But more impressively, during the year, the Model 3 has outsold the Toyota Camry and Honda Accord, which is a pleasant surprise. Next up, China. While overall EV sales numbers have decreased due to government subsidies being reduced, the Tesla Model 3 had another strong month in September, being the third best-selling EV. Looking at monthly Model 3 sales, it continues to surprise me that Chinese consumers are still purchasing US-made Model 3s at a premium when they could simply wait for the Shanghai Gigafactory to start production and buy the car for a significant discount. In my opinion, this is one of the biggest indicators of how strong the demand is in China. And speaking of the Shanghai Gigafactory, production could commence any day now as the factory has achieved a mass production permit and is only waiting for regulatory sales approval. Not to mention, there is drone footage showing 50 completed Model 3s parked outside the factory that were likely some of the first vehicles built to check for production and quality. So production could be starting any day now. Now, when looking at Europe, I'm going to show you all 13 European countries in one go as delivery numbers are pretty much the same for every country. After I show you the charts, I'll explain what likely is happening. So let's start. Norway. The Netherlands. Germany. The UK. France. Switzerland. Sweden. Belgium. Austria. Denmark. Italy. Spain. And finally, Portugal. From my research, it seems that Tesla produced vehicles in a way to maximize the amount of deliveries per quarter, and I believe that they do four production runs a year, with each run being scheduled over three months. In the first month, production is done primarily for the European market. Note, because the cars are being produced in the United States, it takes them a month or two to get to Europe, which is exactly what we just saw with the European numbers. This also means that not as many vehicles are produced for the US market. And again, that's exactly what we see with US sales numbers being low for the month. Midway through the second month of the quarter, production for the European market stops and all the vehicles are put onto boats for Europe. This is also the time that the first cars start to arrive into Europe. At the same time, production increases for the US market and we usually see the second month of the quarter with more sales than the first month of the quarter. In the third month of the quarter, 
all the ships from month 1 and 2 arriving to Europe and we see massive amounts of delivery, while production is set up to produce as many Model 3s for the US market as possible and have them delivered locally before the end of the quarter. And again, that's exactly what we see with the third month of each quarter showing the largest sales volume. So here's what the numbers look like. In Q3, Tesla reported production of just over 6,000 Model 3s per week. And if you do the sums, it means that during the first seven weeks of the quarter, Tesla would be producing about 4,000 Model 3s for Europe and 2,000 a week for the US market. After seven weeks of production, that equals about 28,000 vehicles, which is exactly how many Model 3s were sold in Europe in Q3. Meanwhile, if Tesla is producing 2,000 cars per week in the first month of the quarter, then that would equal about 9,000 cars for the month. And that's exactly what we got. So there you have it. These are the numbers that I get when I reverse engineer Tesla's production and global sales numbers. And this is how Tesla can produce 6,000 cars a week over the quarter and yet deliver most of them in the third month of the quarter. And if you want an example of this, think about the end of Q1 of 2019. Tesla delivered half of their entire quarterly production in the last 10 days of the quarter. So that's all for today, but I really wanted to share the October numbers with you and also give you an in-depth breakdown as to why certain months are higher and lower. And as always, thank you to all the Patreons that have been supporting us. And if you'd like to join our community and help us grow, please consider supporting us on Patreon. And keep a lookout as we'll be soon releasing Episode 5, The Year of 2014, for the Tesla Documentary Series. So until next time, I'll see you guys soon.